In this video, you're going to learn how to work with fractions. So we're going to take a look at fractions, mixed numbers, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. Go ahead and take a screenshot or pause this video and try to attempt these eight problems on your own. And we'll go through them and talk about some of the different ways to solve these problems. Okay, so the first problem, you can see we have an addition problem, 3 sevenths plus 9 fourteenths. The key thing when you're adding or subtracting fractions is to get a common denominator. And what does it mean to get a common denominator? So you look at that number in the bottom of the fraction and you ask yourself, what's the lowest common denominator? Or another way of saying that is, what's the smallest number that 7 would divide into and 14 would also divide into? Now in this case, you can see that they both would divide into 14 evenly without any remainder. So once you recognize that, you can say, well, how do I get both fractions to have a denominator of 14? Well, 3 sevenths, if we multiply the numerator by 2 and the denominator by 2, that's like multiplying the whole fraction by 1 and because 2 divided by 2 is 1. So now when you multiply horizontally across, 3 times 2 is 6, 7 times 2 is 14, and then 9 14 that already has a denominator of 14. So all we have to do now is add the numerator. 6 plus 9 is 15 and you keep that denominator of 14. Sometimes students make a mistake, they try to add those together and say 28, but you just keep that common denominator of 14. But the only issue here is that the numerator is larger than the denominator. That's considered an improper fraction. So what you wanna do is you wanna say, how many times does 14 go in to 15? That's one whole time with one left over. So we say one and one fourteenth, and that's your answer. Okay, for number two, what did you get when you solved this one? Five sixths minus three fifteenths. Well, again, it's the same approach. You wanna look at the denominator and you say, hmm, what's the lowest common denominator? Or another way to say it, a little bit different from the last problem is what's the least common multiple? Meaning if we were to take multiples of the number six, like six times one, six times two, six times three, just keep, adding six or taking basically multiples of six. And you can go as, as, you know, as far as you want. And then take a look at that second number, 15, and look at multiples of 15. So 15 times one is 15, 15 times two is 30, 15 times three is 45. You keep going until you get a common multiple, so one in common. And here you can see that we have a common multiple of 30. That's the lowest one that they have in common. So what you would do there is you'd say, okay, we want to get both fractions to have a denominator of 30. So if I look at 5, 6, what do I have to multiply the numerator and denominator by to get a denominator of 30? Well, you can see that's going to be 5 because 6 times 5 is 30 and the numerator 5 times 5 is 25. So we basically converted 5, 6 into 25 thirtieths. Same fraction, just a different denominator. And we'll do the same thing with 3 fifteenths, we're going to multiply the denominator by 2, so we get 30 in the, in the bottom. If we multiply the denominator by 2, you want to multiply the numerator by 2, 3 times 2 is 6. So now both fractions have a denominator of 30, and we're subtracting. So we have 25 thirtieths minus 6 thirtieths, which is equal to 19 thirtieths, and that's your final result. Okay, for number three, we're switching gears here to multiplication. So we've got four ninths times 27 tenths. Now you can do this a couple different ways. You can multiply horizontally across like four times 27 and nine times 10. So let's do that the first way. Now that's not necessarily the easiest way, but sometimes it's a quick way to do it. So nine times 10 is 90, four times 27 is 108. 90 goes into 108 one full time with 18 left over. And then you can reduce the 18 90ths. Let's see, eight, I'm sorry, nine goes into 18 twice and nine goes into 90 10 times. And two goes into two once and two goes into 10 five times. So we just reduce that down and we're getting one and one fifth. But another way to do this is to make use of what they call cross reducing. Or what you can basically do is you can reduce any numerator with any denominator. Okay, so either top and bottom like this or on the diagonal. So you could say maybe like 4 and 10, is there something that goes into both of those? Or 27 and 9, is there something that goes into both of those? So you can reduce top and bottom or on the diagonals. Let's go ahead and do that. So 9 goes into 9 once, 9 goes into 27 three times, uh, 2 goes into 4 twice, and 2 goes into 10 five times. 
Now when we multiply across, see that 2 times 3 gives us 6, 1 times 5 gives us 5, and so you can see we're getting 6 fifths, which remember 5 goes into 6 one time with 1 left over, so we're getting 1 and 1 fifth, the exact same thing we got when we did it the other way, just multiplying across. So a couple different options. I like the reducing numerator and denominator or on the diagonals just because it makes the numbers a little bit smaller and a little bit easier to work with. Okay, number four, we're switching gears now to division. And when you divide, this is what you want to remember is that you keep it, change it, flip it. So what does that mean? It means you keep that first fraction, you change the division sign to multiplication, and you take the reciprocal of the second fraction here. You flip it over. Once you do that, now you're, it's just like the previous problem. It's a multiplication problem. You can multiply horizontally across. So I could do seven times three is 21 over 15 times two, which is 30. That's one option and then reduce. But what I like to do is I like to see, hmm, is there anything I can reduce numerator and denominator, numerator and denominator or on the diagonals? Well, in this case, I can see three and 15, they both have a three in common. So three goes in here once, three goes into 15 five times. Now when I multiply horizontally across, I get seven times one is seven, five times two is 10, and it's already reduced for me seven tenths. Okay, now for number five, we're getting into problems involving mixed numbers. So it's a part whole, part fraction, right? So there's a couple different ways to do these problems, and I'm gonna show you uh, different ways. You can pick the one that you like. One way to do it is to convert these into improper fractions. So what you would do is you would take the denominator, five, multiply it by the whole number, four, add it to the numerator there too. So it'd be five times four is 20, plus two is 22, all over five. You keep the same denominator. Let's do that again with the three and nine tenths. So you say 10 times three is 30, plus nine is 39, all over that same denominator 10. So now you can see we've got two fractions. Okay, we don't have a mixed number anymore, two improper fractions, but we have to get that common denominator. So we can say, hmm, what's the smallest number that five and 10 both go into? Well, it looks like 10 is the smallest number they both go into. This second fraction already has a denominator of 10. So let's make this first fraction have a denominator of 10 by multiplying the numerator and denominator by two. So that'll give us 44 tenths plus 39 tenths. Now, if we add the numerators, we're gonna get 83, and you keep the common denominator of 10, so 83 tenths. Now, this is an improper fraction, so we have to say how many times does 10 go into 83? Well, it goes in eight whole times with three left over, so our answer is eight and three tenths. Okay, now you're saying, Mario, well, what's the other way, right? The other way is you can stack these uh, vertically, okay, instead of doing the problem horizontally. So what you can do is you can write them one above each other, kind of like this. You could say four and two fifths plus three and nine tenths. And what we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna get a common denominator with the two fifths and the nine tenths. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, hmm, five and 10. We want a common denominator of 10, so I'm gonna multiply the top and bottom by two. So that's giving us four tenths. And so now four tenths plus nine tenths is 13 tenths. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add straight down here with the whole numbers, the four and the three is giving us seven, but you can see we still have a little bit of an issue here, the 13 tenths, that's an improper fraction. So how many times does 10 go into 13? That's one with three left over. So it's one and three tenths, but remember we gotta add that seven to it. So seven plus one and three tenths is gonna give us eight whole and three tenths is the fractional part. So we have eight three tenths, eight and three tenths. We're getting the exact same answer, just kind of a different way of approaching it. Okay, for number six now, what did you get for this one? We've got two mixed numbers. It's a subtraction problem. We can do this a couple different ways. Let's go ahead and do it the way that we did first on the number five. We're gonna multiply two times three is six, plus one is seven, so it's seven halves. So we're writing it as an improper fraction. And then six times one is six, plus five is 11, so that's 11 six. Now we just have to find a common denominator. So we say, hmm, what's the smallest number that two and six both go into? Well, that's six, so I'm gonna multiply the first fraction by three over three, so that gives us 21 sixths minus 11 sixths is equal to 10 sixths. But you can see that's an improper fraction, right? So six goes into 10 once with four left over, 
And then you can see four and six, you can reduce that. Two goes into four twice, two goes into six three times. So our final answer is gonna be one and two thirds. Okay, now for number seven, we're multiplying mixed numbers together. So for this one, I would do the same thing. I would convert this into an improper fraction. So five times two is 10, plus three is 13 fifths. And then same thing here, three times three is nine, plus one is 10 thirds. And now what we can do is we can multiply horizontally across, or we can do some cross reducing or numerator and denominator. So here I can see that five and 10 both have something in common. They both have a five. Five goes in here once, five goes in here twice. Now when I multiply horizontally across, I get 26 thirds. Now you can see that's an improper fraction. How many times does three go into 26? Eight whole times, that's 24. Eight times three is 24 with two left over. So we're getting eight and two thirds. Okay, and our final problem, number eight, we've got three and one fourth divided by two and one sixth. So with division, remember how we said we can keep it, change it, flip it. So we're gonna change the division sign into a multiplication sign and take the reciprocal of two and one sixth. But first we have to convert these mixed numbers into improper fractions. So let's do that. So four times three is 12, plus one is 13, so 13 fourths. Okay, divided by six times two is 12 plus one is 13, so 13 six. Now we're gonna do the keep it, change it, flip it. We're gonna keep the first fraction, change the division sign to multiplication and take the reciprocal of the second fraction. Now what we can do is we can reduce numerator and denominator or numerator and denominator or numerator and denominator or numerator and denominator. So we're looking for where we can uh, reduce a, a top of a fraction and a bottom of a fraction. And so I think what we're gonna do here is just look at these 13s. 13 goes in here once, 13 goes in here once, two goes into four twice, two goes into six three times. Now when we multiply horizontally across, right, we're gonna get one times three, which is three, two times one, which is two. This is an improper fraction. Two goes into three one whole time with one left over, so we get one and one half. So great job if you were able to get all of those. Go ahead and put in the comments you know, which, how many you got right. And if you wanna see some more examples of working with fractions, I'll put a video on the screen that you can uh, click and take a look at there. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in the future videos.